What's going on guys? Super Savage uh 789 here bringing you guys another video. Today we're doing Wolf Ultron was good part 2. In the last part we covered how things changed with Ultron being a protagonist instead of an antagonist. The Maximoff twins ended up being the only threat which were taken down after a lengthy battle. We left off the last part of Ultron finishing his vision body and proceeding to begin making more. Ultron will continue creating his soldiers, making Earth much safer. While quite a few would be focusing on protecting Earth, you'd also have quite a few stationed up in space, to make sure no threats can come in. This is due to him being the bouncer for Earth against space threats. The Avengers would also be prospering during this time, with Ultron's main body acting as the one that helps with the team. Steve would make sure to keep an eye on Ultron to make sure he can't go out of control, and while he is a good ally, he still should be maintained. Like normal, the Avengers would take the covert mission to take down Crossbones and stop him getting the chemical weapon. Everyone would be present like normal except Wanda, since she never became an Avenger. Her presence wouldn't be noticed though through most of the mission, however the lack of her being there is demonstrated when Rumlo self-destructs. We know Wanda to throw him away, Rumlo would explode on the ground, taking out more civilians as well as sweeping up Steve in the blast. Sam and Natasha would rush over to see Steve's injured, unconscious body laying there in critical condition, as well as dead civilians trapped in rubble all around. They'd call in Ultron's drones who'd begin doing the best they can to help any surviving civilians. They also move Steve as fast as possible to the Avengers base, where they do their best to maintain him, stalling for someone to show up to help. With Thor not destroying the cradle and Helen Cho not being dead, this can be used to help Steve to recover. It does take quite a bit of time as you can imagine, but for right now, he is alive, luckily. <laughs> You thought you'd never see me again, didn't you? Well, too bad! I'm alive! Steve would be busy recovering while the rest of the Avengers and super-powered folk learn about the Sokovia Accords. It'd be cool to see Bruce and Ross meet again, with Bruce acting all nervous and Ross being an asshole. They'd all head back to the Avengers base after the briefing and would inform Steve on what happened. A debate then occurs as to what to do going forward. Bruce would try and keep everyone calm and rational to mix results. He'd be leaning towards not signing it though. If he does sign it, they will use him as a weapon, which Bruce definitely doesn't want to happen. Steve will then get the message about Peggy and heads to her funeral, still bandaged and injured. He learns to side the accord from Natasha, and then the events at the UN occur with the bombing. Steve will then move to save Bucky from T'Challa. During the chase, Ultron's drones begin doing their best to take down the trio. Of course, they are fodder, but it does help to disrupt their movements and slow them down. Long enough for Ultron and Rhodey to show up and apprehend them, just as the military show up arresting the trio. Steve and Tony would have their talk and Bucky would be broken out by Zemo. Let's take the opportunity to talk about Zemo in this timeline. While Sokovia was never lifted and dropped, Hulk did rampage and cause casualties in Sokovia. So just say his family died in that carnage, so we can keep the Civil War movie. Bucky would escape, and Steve and Sam meet up with him, where they learn he isn't the only Winter Soldier. They then assemble their team with Bruce there replacing Wanda. A side note here is that there is no fight at Avengers Headquarters, since Wanda and Vision aren't there. As they head to escape, Tony and Rhodey show up and cut off Steve. Instead of webbing him up though, Tony merely tells Steve he should know better than to do this. The sound of a bunch of repulsors can be heard, making them look up. All trying to be leading an army of instrones straight to the airport, landing in a formation to surround the complex. Five other human signatures detected, other than Captain Rogers. Should I proceed with force? That depends on you, Steve. Last warning, you have a surrender, or we make you. Steve would begin to weigh his options, trying to find the situation where he can come out on top. He goes for his shield when Peter jumps in, taking his shield and webbing his hands. Scott then takes his back as Clint shows up to Steve's side as well. Fighting with them begin as it typically does, with Scott, Clint, and Steve focusing on fighting off Rhodey, Ultron, and Tony, and the drones. With so many opponents, Steve wouldn't be able to stop T'Challa, so he'd go and pursue one of the armed assassins, along with Peter. Natasha would then head over to Bruce in the parking lot. Hey big guy, you know I can't just turn myself in. You know what they'll do to me. We'll find a way around it, Bruce, I promise you. We both know that's not true. They've already turned you guys into their fight squad. Then, I'm turning you in. I'm sorry, Nat. But you know I can't let that happen. Bruce would begin turning green and inflates as he becomes the Hulk, growling at Natasha like a monster. She began to run away, shouting into the comms that the Hulk has hit the field. Some Ultron drones would come over and proceed to be shredded apart as he destroys the parking lot he's in. They'd all end up meeting up and lining up together for the iconic pose. Hulk would be looking at Steve like an animal, with Scott remarking he's like a gorilla. 
Steve knows that Hulk is with him, telling Hulk to smash. Everyone would then charge at each other and begin fighting. Ultron and Hulk would then begin fighting, with Ultron having to use the majority of the drones to try and hold him down. Tony considers calling in Veronica again, but Ultron states it'll make it easier for the others to fight him. He'll focus on taking on the Hulk. What this means is that both Ultron and Hulk would only be fighting each other, while everyone else is fights like Ken. As the fight begins to come to the end, Ultron gets an idea. He'd use his phasing to get closer and closer to Hulk, placing a hand on his head as he channels the power of the Mind Stone. He'd give Hulk visions of happiness to calm him, making his rage fade, causing Hulk to fall back into Bruce unconscious. Another change here is that Ultron won't get distracted when firing a mind laser at Sam. This means that he'd take out his wings, leading to him falling down to Earth, being caught by Rhodey on the way down. This would end with Steve and Bucky still getting away like normal. Tony would head to the raft, still speaking to Sam about where Steve and Bucky are, heading where he'd get the location like normal. Before Tony heads off though, he'd go over to both Rhodey and Ultron. He explains the situation to them, telling Rhodey to come with him. He also tests Ultron with keeping Ross off their back while they're gone. Ultron agrees and would begin doing his best to tamper with Ross's electronics to stop him pursuing and contacting anyone else. Rhodey and Tony then get in their armors and head off to Siberia. They'd arrive and make a temporary truce where they go inside, learning of the dead Winter Soldiers as well as the truth of Tony's parents. Tony would give Steve that powerful backhand and rushes at Bucky. As Steve goes to stop him, Rhodey steps in, telling Steve he can't let him do that. The duo would then begin to fight, with Steve being able to outmaneuver Rhodey in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He'd use the minigun to shoot a Cap, who'd use his shield to block the fire. When the gun jams, Steve would then use his shield to destroy it. Steve would then begin to run away, using a repulsive blast from Rhodey to boost him upwards, allowing him to catch up to Tony and Bucky. Rhodey would then rock it over, and a 2 vs 2 fight begins. In canon, it took both Bucky and Steve working together to be able to defeat Tony after a prolonged fight. Here though, with Rhodey in the mix, this fight would be more in the favour of Team Iron Man. It means that Bucky and Steve would be worn down much quicker, with Bucky's metal arm being destroyed even quicker. With a hard blow, Bucky would end up collapsing to the ground unconscious, leaving Rhodey and Tony staring down Steve. They tell him to stand down as they both hold their hands up towards him, which he responds in his typical way of, I can do this all day. They both fire their repulsor blasts at him. He reacts by raising his shield, causing the beams to refract and collide. The beams begin to surge together as they get more intense, leading to them all panicking. An explosion would occur, blinding everyone in light as Steve begins screaming in pain. When the light subsides, a massive hole is left in the wall, with the wind rushing in and only Steve's shield remaining. Both of them peer over the side, with Tony asking Jarvis if he's alive. Jarvis wouldn't detect any life signatures, leaving both Tony and Rhodey upset their friend's death. They would cut their losses and take both Bucky and the shield back with them, feeling grim as they do so. What they don't see is Steve landing in the river down below. He'd quickly regain consciousness due to the freezing cold temperatures of the water, and he'd emerge from the water knowing that he'd lost. He'd contact Natasha and the duo would meet up where they'd head to the raft. They would infiltrate it and save all the Avengers that were captured. As they go to leave though, someone asked them to wait. It was Pietro in his cell. Take us with you. You can't be serious. You're a wanted criminal. And from the looks of it, so are you. If you come with us, you're a fugitive, but you're also one of us. Can I count on you to be our allies, or will we have to put you back here again? At that, both Pietro and Wanda would smirk, leading to Steve welcoming them to the team, freeing them from their cells as Civil War would end, leading to a much bigger Secret Avengers team. It also leads to the end of this part, because that's where I'm going to leave it here. Make sure you like and subscribe, and comment down below what's going to happen in part 3. I quite like the way I handled this with Hulk being there. I feel like it's quite realistic, and while some others would disagree, you're wrong. And so uh, yeah, bye!